and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our dye, Magic Iris Floral Wreath Add-on. This dye is so beautiful and it's awesome because it works as an add-on for our interactive dye, Magic Iris. The other thing I love about this wreath add-on is that you can use it with the Magic Iris or without, and we're gonna be showing you both ways in the video today. Here are all the pieces that come in the floral wreath add-on. Of course, there's the beautiful wreath and then all these flowers that you can layer over top or even tuck behind to add even more flowers to your design. It also cuts the perfect size center for your magic iris. Now this is the original Magic Iris add-on and this wreath layers beautifully over top. It looks so gorgeous like this and we'll be making a Magic Iris in just a little bit. And there you can see the circle that the center part of the die cuts out if it's perfectly on the inside of the Magic Iris. And then of course there are these cute tiny little flowers included in the set. So there are some flower centers that you can layer onto the flowers. And then we also have these teeny tiny little flowers that you can layer over the buds that are on the die. And we're going to layer the little flower over top the base and that's going to fill in the center of the flower. And then we can take these guys and layer them onto the wreath. So you can see there, there's a little kind of greenery piece which you can layer behind. And then you can take those flowers and layer them on top of the wreath to add color. The other thing I love about the separate flowers is that you could use them just on their own without the wreath too. So there's so many different ways to use the die cuts in this set. I just love the little tulips that are included in this set. And then you'll see there's some tiny tulips and some tiny little flowers. Those you could layer around the wreath or you can layer them right on top of those little buds and you can add more flowers to the wreath. So you can use those little buds as is or you can layer over top the tiny little flowers and the tiny tulips. I absolutely love this layering technique and we're gonna be doing that on the second card. But for the first card, we're actually gonna be using our markers to add color to the wreath. So we're gonna die cut the wreath and a bunch of the flowers out of some white cardstock and we're gonna use Copic markers to add color. I also think watercolor or colored pencils would look absolutely gorgeous for this. I put a piece of copy paper down and then put all of my die cuts on top just so I wouldn't get Copic marker all over my work surface. And now I'm gonna start coloring in the leaves. And you'll see that as I color in the different elements on this die, I'm being careful to not any, any marker into that center stitch circle. I want that part to remain white. It's just so there'll be a nice contrast between the leaves and that little ring part of the wreath. Now here you can see I've added my dark marker. Now I'm gonna add my medium marker and you'll see I'm being really careful there as I get to the edge and just kind of tracing right along the edge of that white circle. And then I'll be able to finish it off with my lighter marker just towards the top of the leaves. And this is gonna give it just a beautiful and nice gradient. And I'm gonna repeat the same idea over the green leaves all throughout this wreath. Once I finish the rest of the green leaves, we're gonna move on to the flowers and the tulips. And right now I'm recreating a card by Grace. And when I saw this Grace card, oh my goodness. I mean, every Grace card makes me say, oh my goodness. It's just so beautiful and so gorgeous. And it was so much fun to recreate. So for the tulips, we're gonna be adding some pink. So once again, I've got my dark marker, my medium marker, and then I add the light marker just towards the tips and it just adds just a little extra detail. And this doesn't take too long to do to add the color this way. And honestly, it's really, really fun. Like I just had a blast coloring in these flowers. So next up, we're gonna move on to a nice bright yellow and I'll do the darker yellow in the middle and then just blend it out with my light marker. Then for these kind of little clovery petals, we're gonna add a nice light blue to those. And then we're going to add a little bit of the light blue to the tips of the buds. And I'll also go over those with a little bit of green. So it looks like a bud that's just about to open up. Then we're going to add some darker blue just for some detail and blend it out with the light marker. And then we're going to add darker blue dots onto the flower centers as well. And that pop of the darker blue is so pretty. Now here I realized I had way too many yellow flowers, so I decided to color some more individual flowers in that blue color, um, and we're going to add the flower centers into those. It's time to start working on the card base. So we're going to take out the flower market paper, and there's this really beautiful yellow stripe. So we're going to cut a standard size card at five and a half by four and a quarter, and then we're going to take this stitched scallop frame and die cut it out of white cardstock. I'm just going to add some tape runner to the back of that and layer that onto the card base. And this is going to be a really pretty frame for the wreath. Now I'm layering this on here now because the next step I want to do is stamp my sentiment, but I wanted to make sure I had that wreath exactly in right placement so I knew where to put my sentiment on here. 
And we're going to be using the stamp set Better Days, and it has the sweetest sentiments in it. So we're going to say, Better Days are ahead. Until then, I'm sending hugs, which is so adorable. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my Misty tool to help me get my sentiment in the exact right placement. So I'm going to take my wreath and layer my wreath in the center, and then that way I can have the sentiments on the top and the bottom in perfect placement. Once I have them in the perfect place, I'll remove the wreath and then I can just pick up those stamps and stamp those sentiments right down. And I really like using a misty for things like this where I wanna make sure that my sentiment is right in the right placement. I'm gonna stamp using some dough ink just for a nice soft touch. This is a really soft card. So instead of using black, which might be just a little bit too dark, we're gonna use this beautiful brown. And so we're gonna stamp that in in the dough ink. And then we can start to work on layering the wreath. So I'm gonna add some liquid glue on the back and then layer that into the center of the card. Now at the beginning of the video, we talked about how this Magic Hours Floral Wreath creates a little circle in the center. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna die cut it from some pixie dust cardstock, which is a beautiful glitter cardstock, and we're gonna have this beautiful little glitter piece that we can drop right in the center of the wreath. Another detail that Grace added was this cute little bow, and it actually comes from the platform pop-up die. So I love getting to use the little elements in my interactive dies for different cards. And so here is that cute little bow. We're gonna die cut that from some yellow shimmer cardstock, which is gonna go along with the yellow background and yellow flowers. And we're gonna layer these pieces together with just a little tape runner. So we have the bow ends, and then the bow piece, and then the little bow center. Then we'll layer the bow at the very top and it reminds me of a wreath on a door when it's got that pretty bow at the top. Next, we stamped out that bunny from Better Days in some crunchy leaf ink. And this ink is just like Jet Black. It's a Copic friendly and watercolor friendly ink, but in this awesome brown color. And what that gives you is just adorable kind of storybook look, really soft. It goes along with the sentiment we stamped in brown and just gives this beautiful soft look. So I love this. We also have it in a gray called River Rock too. So we're going to start layering our pieces. We're going to take those blue flowers that we colored and we're going to add those to the center. And those are going to be flowers that are kind of like a little bed of flowers that our bunny is going to be sitting in. I added some foam squares to the back of the bunny just to give him a little pop. And then we're going to layer him in those flowers, which is so super cute. Now you'll notice that I had some extra flowers on the side and I kind of played around. I was like, oh, do they look good? Kind of tucked under, but I actually really liked it just as it was. So I'm going to save the flowers and put them on the inside of my card. So here's a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some tape runner to the front and then we're going to layer this on top. And then we're actually going to layer those flowers on the inside of the card base. And I don't do this often enough is decorate the inside of my cards, but it's so fun and so pretty when you do that. And a lot of times I have little extra stamped colored and die cut pieces or die cut pieces like this. And I think it looks so cute added to the inside. Now, right now, I remembered that this die set has these tiny little flowers and Grace had tucked one of the flowers in the little bunny's ear. So we're gonna do the same thing here. And to have it all coordinate, I'm gonna use the same blue and yellow markers that I colored the flowers with. I'm just gonna scribble it onto some cardstock and then we're gonna die cut these tiny flowers from the cardstock and then layer them together so that we have the beautiful little yellow center on the inside. Then we can layer it onto the bunny, which is so cute. And then we'll have an extra flower that we can layer onto the inside design we've done too. And now this card is all done and this is such a sweet encouragement card. It's just so beautiful. It was so much fun to make and it's going to be even better to send it to someone. I love the flowers colored in with Copic markers, that beautiful glittered background and that adorable Better Days bunny and our fun little design on the inside too. So next up, we're going to be using some colored cardstock, layering flowers and creating a magic iris with the magic floral wreath add-on. So we're gonna be die cutting the main wreath using some of the shimmer cardstock in this beautiful green color. And then we're gonna die cut the flowers out of ballet slippers cardstock, which is a really pretty pink, and also out of some apricot cardstock, which is, well, apricot colored and is really pretty. I love the color combo of this. And this color idea came from Audrey. She had the most beautiful color combo and I loved how she had the apricot and pink colors together. Now to add a little bit of detail to this colored cardstock, this is my favorite way to do it and it's so easy. You just take a marker in a similar color and all you need to do is add a little line of marker right along the little cut lines that the die creates. So those little details on the flowers and I'm just adding the marker right to those details. And now I'll take a look at this flower. It looks like almost three dimensional. It looks really, really awesome. So we're just gonna follow all of those little lines with our marker and it just adds the perfect amount of detail and it just takes a few seconds to do.
For the flower centers, I cut them out of some white cardstock and I found some markers that match that apricot color but were just a little bit lighter. I didn't want the flower center to be the exact same color as those apricot tulips because I thought it would be kind of too matchy matchy. So here I'm just taking some markers and going light, medium to dark and adding a little bit of shading on these little white pieces of cardstock. So you'll see dark there and then medium and then light. And I'm just coloring over a piece of scrap cardstock just so that I don't get marker all over my work surface. Now that I have my little flower centers done, we can add some liquid glue to the center of each flower with the glue tube and we can drop those little flower centers on. And doesn't that look so pretty? I love that it kind of matches the apricot tulips, but not quite exactly. Now we can start to add these flowers onto the wreath and you'll see how it just makes the wreath come to life. So I always like to add a little bit of liquid glue, just a little drop in the center and on each petal and then I can layer my flowers on top. And oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I love this part. It almost feels like I'm arranging flowers and creating my own real wreath. And so now we're gonna layer the tulips on and you'll see just how cute this is looking. For the center of this wreath, we're going to take out the Magic Spring Messages stamp set. And this stamp set is so awesome. I just love it. And we're going to be stamping out the Happy Mother's Day because Mother's Day will be here before you know it. So we're going to stamp that out in some jet black ink. And then we're going to die cut it with the coordinating die for the Magic Spring Messages. The cool thing about the coordinating die for Magic Spring Messages is it's the exact size as the center of any of the Magic Iris products. So you can always mix and match any of these. Now I'm gonna use similar markers in both pinks and that apricot color to color in the Happy Mother's Day and then a green to go along with the wreath so that the colors in my spring message are perfectly matched to the wreath. Then we're gonna set this aside and start to work on the card front. So I'm gonna be using some original watercolor wishes paper and we're gonna be using this awesome kind of turquoisey color and I love that watercolor texture. We're going to be die cutting this with this polka dot backdrop die, which is such an awesome backdrop die. So we're going to run that through and I haven't used this one in a long time. And oh my goodness, I should be using it more because it's just so adorable. And here you can see, I'm kind of checking to see, does this look good with the wreath? And I really like those colors together. Next, we're gonna take out our Magic Iris and we're gonna start with this original Magic Iris add-on, which creates this really awesome front panel. And we're gonna die cut this panel from the polka dot backdrop. I'm taking time to make sure it's nice and centered so that none of my polka dots are cut off in kind of a weird way. We'll run it through the die cut machine and now we have this awesome polka dotted backdrop. I'm also gonna die cut that's just a plain white cardstock piece in that same die cut shape and that way we can layer it behind and the white cardstock is gonna fill in those little polka dots making it look like I have this watercolor textured front with white polka dots peeking through. For the next step, we're gonna take that wreath that we were working on earlier and we're gonna add some foam squares to the back. And I'm using some of these micro foam square dots and I love these, especially for tiny little things like these flowers. You can just put them right in the center and then we're gonna layer that over the top. And I really like the foam behind the wreath. I feel like the pop from behind the background just makes a little, a simple card a little more special. So now that we have our whole Magic Iris front, we can work on the Magic Iris mechanism. And we're gonna start off by die cutting one of the main rings in the set. Then we're gonna take this piece, we sometimes call it the radioactive piece or the flux capacitor, and we're gonna layer that right into the center and this is gonna be die cutting one of the parts of the mechanism for the magic iris. Then we're gonna die cut two more rings and we're just gonna leave those plain. There's a piece that we call the sausage because it kind of looks like a sausage there and we're gonna die cut three of those out of that same watercolor wishes paper that we use for that polka dotted card front. Next, we're gonna take those sausage pieces and we're going to add them to this ring. So we're just gonna insert it right into the slot and you'll see that the curve of that piece is gonna match the interior curve of the ring. And we're gonna do that with all three of these. So we're gonna add each one in. And if you've never made a magic iris before, make sure to check out our intro to magic iris video. It has these really awesome detailed instructions that'll be perfect and these dies are so much fun. Now that we've added the three pieces, we can start to add some glue dots. So you'll see on the sausage pieces, there's almost like a little X that the die creates for you. It's a little X marks the spot. And we're gonna be adding a glue dot to each of these X's. And this is the mini size glue dot. And the size of glue dot really does matter for this. So definitely use the mini size of glue dot. And we're gonna add one to each of the X's. Then we're gonna take out one of the plain rings and then we're gonna take those pieces there and make sure that they're perfectly lined up on the ring. So the interior curve of the sausage piece should line up perfectly with the interior curve of the ring. And so I'm just making sure those all line up and then I can take that plain ring and lay it right on top and it's going to attach to those glue dots. 
Next, we're gonna flip the whole thing over and you'll see that there's these awesome little stitched guidelines on the back that are almost like these little tiny little rectangles. This is a guide place that we're gonna put our stabilizers and adhesive. So what you're gonna do is take your adhesive and go from the inside of the ring to the outside on each of those little stitched rectangles there and that's the perfect guide. So we're gonna add some adhesive to all three of those and then we can take the stabilizer pieces and we're gonna line that up exactly where we put that adhesive. Then we can take each of those stabilizers and line them right up. And you'll see that each of those die cuts has like a little curve on it. That curve is once again gonna line up with the interior curve of that ring. So we'll attach all three of those on. Then we'll flip the whole thing over and I'm gonna take one of those stabilizer pieces and just point it down towards me. And then here we have the tab. The tab is gonna go to the right of that stabilizer piece. So we're gonna add some adhesive to the back of that tab about halfway down. Then we'll attach the tab once again to the right of that stabilizer piece and you'll see there's a little curve on the tab. It's gonna line up perfectly with the curve on the inside of the ring. Now we can add another one of these plain rings on top. No adhesive or anything, we're just gonna lay it right on top. Then we're gonna add some tape runner to each of these stabilizer pieces that are sticking out and we're gonna wrap them around the ring, securing it in place. Now, when you wrap this around, you want it to just lightly hug. You don't want it to be super tight because we still want our rings to be able to move to create the mechanism. So I'm just lightly wrapping it around and you'll notice as they wrap around, they're not gonna adhere all the way to the interior edge of the ring. That's okay, that's what we want. Now I can test it and see. I'm gonna kind of move it around. I'm gonna pull my tab and voila, we have a working magic iris. Now that Magic Iris add-on die has this really cool tab that goes along with it. So I went ahead and die cut that from some more of that polka dotted die cut piece. We had some from the interior there. I just saved some and then die cut that little tab. And then we're gonna add that right on. And this decorative tab is going to let the recipient know what to do because it has that awesome little arrow. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of white piece hanging off there. We can just trim that right off and that's going to give us the perfect shape tab for the Magic Iris add-on and also that really cool arrow. Here I have a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm gonna layer that Magic Iris add-on cover plate piece right on top, and then I'm going to put that Magic Spring message in the center. I like to do this because it's gonna give me perfect placement for the message, but I think it's a lot easier to add it this way instead of when the Magic Iris mechanism is there, it makes it a little bit harder. So I'm just gonna kind of put it right in the center and then just remove that cover plate and I can press down and make sure it's nice and secure. Next, we're gonna attach the Magic Iris mechanism to that cover plate piece. So we're gonna add some tape runner all along the front of that Magic Iris. And then what I like to do is take it and make sure that tab there is exactly straight. I'm using my grid mat as a guide and then I can layer my other piece right on top and you'll see it just fills in that little half circle. So we're just gonna attach that right on. Then what we can do is flip it over We'll add some foam squares to the top and bottom just to give it some nice even height all of the way around. And then we're gonna add some tape runner just on those stabilizer pieces. You wanna make sure that you don't add the tape runner anywhere else because we want our mechanism to still work really well. So we're just gonna add that tape runner onto the stabilizer pieces. You can peel up the liner paper on the foam squares and then we're gonna layer that over. I'm gonna open the magic iris so that I can look right through into my sentiment there and that's gonna help me line up the whole thing perfectly. Perfectly. And now our mechanism is all done. This is my favorite part. Now I can play with it. It looks so cool. I love it so much. And now for a little extra sparkly detail because I mean sparkle is always so much fun. We're gonna be using the sparkle glaze pen and just adding a little bit of shine. So I'm gonna add some sparkle to the center of each of the flowers and then just as a detail on the leaves. And Audrey did this on her card and I thought it was just so pretty. It almost looked like a little frost or something on each of the leaves, just gorgeous. So I'm doing a really thin layer and it's really subtle but it really adds a lot to the card. So I'm gonna add it a little bit just to the tips of like the little buds and leaves um, and then also kind of along the edges of those longer leaves and it just looks so pretty. 
And here is a close-up look at what the glitter looks like on top of that shimmer paper with all of those beautiful little marker details that we added onto the flowers. So quick and easy to do, but it looks so beautiful and so awesome. And of course, this is such a fun magic iris. As you pull the tab, we get the surprise of that magic spring message on the inside. And I love this being a Mother's Day card, but you could use any of those sentiments in it and it would look awesome with this. I love that you could also change the color palette with this same design, which would be really, really fun too. Now, next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And this first card by Megan is just gorgeous. I love how she added that beautiful marker detail to her magic floral wreath. Here, this card by Minnie just made me smile. I love how she layered some Henry's ABC's letters over across the top of the wreath. These are the cards that inspired me to make mine today by Grace, and I love how she layered two of the wreaths to make it look like a larger oval. Isn't that just stunning? This card here by Callie is so pretty. I love how she added color to that wreath and layered those tiny little flowers on. And then this is the card by Audrey that inspired me to make mine. I loved her polka dot and her colors. It's just gorgeous. Kara's Magic Iris card is just beautiful and the colors kind of remind me of Lily of the Valleys. It's just stunning. Then here, Shari's card is so much fun. I love how she layered the extra leaves in front and behind of the wreath to give it a really full look. And then this card by Letitia is so fun. I love the spring blossom stenciled behind the wreath. And then here, I love that Lynette created a beautiful Mother's Day card and how she layered the tiny little tulips on the design as well. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with this awesome add-on, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.